what attracted me to study plants in the first place is I was very curious with plants from childhood and uh, I would probably eat or cut a plant and play with it and I, I grew with my grandmother and she was always worried that I would get somehow poisoned and when she underlined that I was uh, surprised that plants could actually poison you and I wanted to study what is there in the plants to poison me. Uh, then I asked my uncle where I can go to study this and he recommended chemistry but then I joined the school of pharmacy and now I study not only the poisonous part of the plants but what makes them beneficial to our health. Uh, and when I study this I also work closely with traditional healers 70% uh, of our population in Ethiopia uses traditional medicine for their primary health care. So uh, I thought it is a matter of justice and relevance uh, to study what 70% of your population uses for their health care. So I focus on uh, peptides, which are small proteins. So I uh, study plants which contain those peptides, which can be beneficial to our health. And I study them associated with malaria. I do anti-malarial drug research as well because malaria is one of the important diseases we have in the tropical areas. Uh, there is a lot embedded in our indigenous knowledge, be it in traditional medicine or any uh, other sciences, other fields. Uh, so uh, I feel that there is, uh, it's high time that we look into indigenous knowledge and marry it with uh, conventional knowledge for the benefit of our society. In the next five to 10 years, um, of course, I would like to create young Africans who are very passionate about Africa, African problems, African solutions, uh, that I, want, I uh, try to tie in my uh, teachings as well. I don't just teach pharmacy or pharmacognosy. Uh, and research-wise, um, I aspire that our traditional medicine would become one of the strongest areas of primary health care. Uh, so apart from now, studying activity and chemistry. Uh, I'm also looking into regulating herbal medicines and uh, in the clinical aspect, possible interactions of herbs with drugs, with conventional drugs. So inputs from all these, I think, would give a uh, concrete base to utilize our traditional medicine in our primary health care. Human uh, being is now faced with new diseases and uh, older diseases we knew, with, uh, we knew with newer resistance. So there is a call for new drugs, new drug compounds to be in the market. And according to literature, nature remains to be the biggest, if not the only source to provide us with newer drugs. And this information about natural drugs, again, is mainly found from traditional healers, according to WHO's report as well. Uh, so, um, in order to improve the life of Africans, not only Africans, but human beings in general, uh, we have to look into nature, and that information about natural medicines usually lies in indigenous traditional uh, medicinal knowledge, uh, and hence we have to look, really look into traditional medicine. First of all, the system has to change, uh, but we can't wait until it changes. So we have to develop a mechanism of staying in. Uh, and uh, as I always say, family and science or family and research should not be a matter of choice. Um, so it's, as, as someone has said, it, it's like jiggling boats. So at a given point in time, probably you would give more time to your family. And at a given point of time, you would give a little bit more time to your care. Uh, of course, you would need due support from brothers, husbands and uh, fathers and senior uh, faculty as well. Uh, I am uh, lucky in a way because I had a very supportive uh, family and I had a very supportive professors and a very supportive system. I did my PhD in Scandinavia. Uh, so that made me able to sustain and stay. Uh, but always we, have to, we don't have to think in a way that it's a choice. It's either my family or my care. Both can go hand in hand. Only at times you have to make a little bit of more time to one. Uh, we have to build our capacity so that women get PhD or women or men for that matter get PhD education within their country. So our local universities should work hard to develop their capacities to become competent
PhD uh, in giving institutions. Uh, and afterwards, after family comes, uh, I would uh, appreciate if the system gives, for example, say 50% of employment per your choice. And so if I'm employed 50%, then I work 50% of my time and I would give 50% of my time to my children uh, or my family. Uh, otherwise, uh, if it's 100% or no, then again, it will become a matter of a choice. Then I, would, may, I may have to forsake my carer to raise my children or support my family. But uh, this um, percent employment, which are exercised also in some of the well-developed countries, could be tried here as well.